So, you recently came back from holiday and had to book your dog into the kennels. He is now making these horrible coughing sounds as if something is stuck in his throat, but is otherwise looking healthy. <coughs> is this serious? Hey guys, Dr. Beecher. I'm a veterinarian from South Africa. And in today's video, I will be discussing kennel cough in dogs, where I will explain exactly what the causes, clinical signs, diagnosis, treatment and prevention methods for kennel cough infection in dogs are, so that you will have a better idea of if your dog might be suffering from it and what you can do to help him. Now kennel cough, also known as canine infectious tracheobronchitis, is a highly contagious respiratory disease that causes inflammation of the trachea and the bronchi, which are basically the tubes leading to the lungs. And this is very similar to the common cold in humans. Now the most common and classical symptom of kennel cough is a persistent forceful cough, which will almost sound like a goose honk or as if something is stuck inside the dog's throat. And you will often see the dog retching with the production of white foam that he will then try to swallow. Now, some dogs with kennel cough may also show other symptoms of illness, including things like sneezing, a runny nose, and a transparent to cloudy discharge from the eyes. But they will really also have a reduced appetite and decreased levels of energy. Now, kennel cough does not have one specific cause, but is rather a mixture of several different kinds of bacteria and viruses. One of the most common culprits is a bacteria called Bordetella bronchiseptica. But most dogs that become infected with Bordetella are also infected with a virus at the same time. This is because these viruses make the dog more susceptible to contracting Bordetella infection. And examples of these viruses include canine adenovirus, canine distemper virus, canine herpes virus, parainfluenza virus, mycoplasma and canine rheovirus. Now dogs basically catch kennel cough when they inhale the bacteria or virus particles into their respiratory tract by means of respiratory droplets, direct contact, for example when they touch noses, or from contaminated surfaces such as water or food bowls. Now a normal healthy respiratory tract is usually lined by cilia, which are tiny hair-like projections that protect the respiratory tract by clearing away irritants such as dust, bacteria and other microorganisms with kind of wave-like motions from the deep ends of the lungs all the way upward towards the throat, where they are then either coughed up or swallowed down again. Now, these viruses basically attack and damage the cilia, causing the protective mechanism to break down and thus increase the chances that one or more infection will develop. This will ultimately result in inflammation of the larynx, also known as the voice box, the trachea, aka the windpipe, and the bronchioles. Things that predisposes your dog to developing kennel cough include exposure to crowded and poorly ventilated conditions, such as found in many kennels, shelters, dog parks, and dog shows, hence the name kennel cough, colder temperatures, stress induced by traveling long distances, and exposure to respiratory irritants such as dust or cigarette smoke. Now your vet will typically diagnose kennel cough based on your dog's recent history and presenting clinical signs. For example, if you have a puppy that was recently adopted from a shelter or kennel or who spent some time at a boarding facility, who is now coughing but is otherwise looking healthy, then this will give us a very high suspicion that you may have contracted kennel cough. Your vet will regardless need to perform a full clinical examination and he will typically apply firm pressure to the dog's trachea, which will often elicit a cough. He will need to listen very carefully to the heart and the lungs and if anything sounds off, he may also opt to take thoracic radiographs to look for signs of bronchitis or pneumonia in order to assess how severe the infection is. Now, most cases of kennel cough will eventually resolve without treatment, but medication will definitely help to speed up the recovery as well as minimizing the symptoms during the course of the infection. Most healthy dogs with kennel cough recover completely within about three weeks of time, 
but some dogs may become very sick and are thus susceptible to more severe complications. These include puppies that have immature immune systems, especially very young puppies that have not been fully vaccinated, other dogs that have a decreased immune defense or other serious concurrent diseases such as heart failure, diabetes or cancer, pregnant dogs that may have a low immunity, as well as dogs that have other pre-existing respiratory diseases such as tracheal collapse, chronic bronchitis and severe respiratory allergies. In mild cases of kennel cough, your vet may prescribe antibiotics that target the Bordetella bacteria directly, such as doxycycline, medication to help suppress the dog's cough, bronchodilators to open its airways to make breathing a bit easier, and anti-inflammatories to help soothe the dog's throat. But if your dog is severely affected and develops a form of pneumonia, then he may need to be hospitalized to receive intravenous fluids and antibiotics, as well as possible oxygen therapy which can end up being quite expensive. Now, after your dog is discharged from the hospital, there are a couple of home remedies that you can apply to help speed up his recovery. Number one, keep your dog in a well humidified area by placing a small humidifier near your dog when he's resting. This will moisten the air that your dog breathes, which can help to reduce the irritation on the respiratory tract. If you don't have a humidifier, then use your shower to perform steam therapy for about 10 minutes at a time. If you are taking a hot shower or bath, let your dog stay in the closed bathroom with you, but not directly inside the shower. The steam from the shower can provide steam therapy, which will also decrease irritation on the airways. Number two, add honey to warm water. Honey is a great home remedy for kennel cough, as it can help soothe your dog's throat and thus minimize coughing. You can give about half a teaspoon of honey mixed with a little warm water in a water bowl and offer it up to three times a day, depending on how often your dog coughs. Number three, use warm wet cloths or cotton balls to help soak and soften the eye and nasal discharge secretions and clean them off at least twice a day. Number four, make sure your dog is getting plenty of rest. Try to reduce the amount of exercise your dog gets on a daily basis while they are recovering from kennel cough, as this will help with the healing process and thus reduce the frequency of coughing spells. Number five, use a harness instead of a collar, especially if your dog is prone to strain against the leash, as this will reduce the strain put on its throat. And number six, while your dog is at home recovering from kennel cough, make sure to avoid irritants such as household cleaners, cigarette smoke and dust. These things just causes more irritation and may prolong your dog's recovery. Now, if your dog's cough does not improve within the expected amount of time, then it is important to follow up with your veterinarian, as persistent kennel cough infections can often result in pneumonia, which is serious and often life-threatening. Also, if your dog at any time has symptoms of rapid breathing, inappetence or listlessness, then contact your vet as soon as possible, as these could be signs pointing towards a more serious condition. Now, kennel cough is one of those diseases where the best treatment is prevention. There are currently three forms of vaccines available for Bordetella bronchiseptica, which is the most common cause of kennel cough. These include one that is injected, one that is delivered as a nasal spray, and one that can be given by mouth. These are usually given in two doses, two to four weeks apart. The intranasal and oral kennel cough vaccinations are typically given to your dogs once a year, but is sometimes recommended every six months for dogs at a higher risk for developing kennel cough infections. These forms of the vaccine also tend to provide protection against kennel cough much sooner than the injectable form, as they allow local immunity to develop on the mucous membranes of the nose, throat and windpipe where the infection agents first attack. Also note that many boarding kennels will require proof that your dog is vaccinated against kennel cough even before they allow him to board. It is also very important to ensure that your dog is vaccinated against parainfluenza virus, canine distemper virus and canine adenovirus as these can also predispose your dog to developing severe forms of kennel cough. Now luckily, all three of these vaccinations are usually included in the puppy and booster vaccinations. Now, although these vaccines will definitely help, 
they do not guarantee full protection against kennel cough or infectious tracheobronchitis due to the fact that it can be caused by so many kinds of bacteria and viruses. It is also important to note that none of these forms of kennel cough vaccinations will treat an actual active infection. Now it is really important to understand that kennel cough is extremely contagious. If you suspect your dog might have the condition, you should keep him away from other dogs and contact your veterinarian. Although kennel cough can sound quite terrible, most of the time it is not such a serious condition and most dogs will eventually recover without any treatment. But any dog that coughs could potentially be suffering from a much more serious disease as canine distemper virus and canine influenza virus both start off with symptoms nearly identical to kennel cough and other conditions that also causes similar coughs in dogs include a collapsing trachea, canine bronchitis, asthma and heart disease. So it is always better to take your coughing dog to the vet to have him checked out. And if you are not yet sure of what might be causing the cough in your dog, then make sure to watch my video on the top 8 most common causes of coughing in dogs, as well as this playlist where I discuss each condition individually. Thank you for watching guys. If you found value in this video, I would really appreciate it if you can leave a like on this video and share it with your friends and your family. And if you are new to my channel, consider subscribing as I'll be posting new videos on interesting pet related topics every week. And as always, have a lucky day and I'll see you in another video next week. Cheers.